In 1992, a Korean American by the name of Chu Thomas becomes a born again Christian. What makes this story unique is that two years after her conversion, Chu was visited by Jesus Christ of Nazareth. She was subsequently escorted to heaven several times and shown hell twice. Chu Thomas has written a book about her experiences. The book is called Heaven is So Real and it was published on October 2003. Within a year of being published, this book has become an international bestseller as well as a top 10 Christian charismatic book in the United States. How does a simple housewife who speaks limited English not only manage to publish a book, but within a year of being published, it becomes an international bestseller? Or perhaps an even more important question is, why these revelations now? Heaven is so real, and this is the story of True Thomas. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing me to testify. Hallelujah. I become Christian since uh, in 1992, and I really fell in love with Jesus after I went to church a few times. Uh, and I wanted to give uh, every my being to Him the rest of my life. And I want to speak briefly about a book called Heaven is So Real. The Lord Jesus himself took me to heaven 17 times with my transformed body. Like when I was 15 or 16 years old. Before this, he prepared everything step by step. 1994, he anointed me, my entire body, with holy fire. Then about a month later, he showed me with his visible presence at the church during worship service. Then, 1995, Easter Sunday, he anointed me with a shaking body. And ever since, my body shakes at the church during my prayer time. You see, my body is moving back and forth right now. If I don't do this, my stomach gets very tight and it feels like exploding. That's why I'm moving back and forth. So, Please don't think anything wrong with my body. That's the Holy Spirit doing this. Because I'm talking about Jesus. That's why. And then, after this, He baptized me with the Holy Spirit. With the new tongues. Heavenly songs, holy laughter. And I was so anointed for three hours, and I was on the floor. I couldn't get up because it was too powerful. After that, a few months later, Pastor Rary Randolph, he prophesied for me. And he told me that God wants to use me in such a special way. And all his prophetic words came through a thousand times more. And after this, January 1996, Lord Jesus, he was visiting me with his visible presence. And he visited me for ten times to tell me how he gonna use and uh, all the things his his plans you know, he was telling me about it. It's in the book, but he didn't tell me he gonna take me to heaven. So after ten times, February nineteen ninety six, 
he began to take me to heaven with my transformed body, like uh, his spirit body, my body. Each time before he took me to heaven, he brought me to the beach, utterly beach. The very first time before he took me to heaven, he took me to one side of a beach, he showed me small body of water, crystal clear. Then he showed me huge, shiny tunnel. So after that, he took me to heaven. After going through the tunnel, Chu writes, The Lord and I walked along the road that came down from the top of the hill. Eventually, we reached a huge white gate that stood in front of a large white building. We walked through the gate and proceeded towards the white building. We entered and walked down a long corridor that led to a very large room, which we entered. As I looked down, I realized for the first time that I was wearing a different robe than I had on the beach, and I could feel something heavy was resting on my head. I reached up and discovered a beautiful crown had been placed there without my realizing it. Then I looked directly at the Lord. He was sitting on a throne, and He wore a radiant gown and a golden crown. Others were there with me, kneeling on the floor and prostrating themselves before Him. The walls of the room were made of large shiny stones that glowed, and the multicolored rocks provided an effect that made the room seem warm and happy, as well as mysterious. Then, just as quickly as I had been transported up the mountain and into the white building, I found myself on the beach again. Very first time, he only showed me his throne room. Then after that, we came down from heaven and uh, we were sitting on the sand on Altar Beach. And then he began to talk. He said, we just went to Kingdom of Heaven. The only one will come there are obedient and pure-hearted. And he say, preaching gospel is very important. And he waited for a while. He say, those who don't tie, they are disobedient Christians. That was the last way he said, the first trip. Chu went on to visit heaven 16 more times. In each of these visits, she writes, in my transformed body, I walked with the Lord on the beach and then he escorted me to heaven. We walked through the pearly gates and went to the white building to change our clothing. After changing, we walked across the golden bridge. It all was becoming so natural to me. Each believer, I'm sure, will go through the same procedure when he or she goes to heaven. After that, he took me to heaven 16 more times. Each time he took me there, he showed me different things. And when he showed me special things, always he was saying that, I prepared this for my children. I know what they like. Like when he showed me beach. You see, daughter, how beautiful this beach is? I know my children like this beach. And when he took me to fishing, I know my children like fishing. That's why I prepared so many things what they like. And I realized uh, in heaven is uh, well, a thousand times beautiful than on earth, but a lot of things uh, like on earth, like uh, roads, buildings, trees, bushes, rocks, flowers, rough places uh, outside the kingdom. It's just so many things there, but uh, they are uh, thousand times beautiful than on earthly things. Just beautiful. The beauty of heaven is indescribable. And I can't even describe how beautiful they are. Just beautiful. And uh, I realized how much Jesus loves each and every one of us. The way he talked to me was saying that you see how much I love my children. 
You know, I did all these things for my children. That's why he took me there to show what he prepared for his children. So let each and every one of us know what the heaven is waiting for us. So before he comes, he wants all the Christians to know these things. So they can be excited, go there. That's why I believe he showed me these things. He doesn't tell me everything, you know, thoroughly. He just showed me some certain things that just say very few words, necessary words, he tells me. It's a loving God he is. Praise you, Lord. Besides experiencing heaven, Chu was also shown hell twice. On this, she writes, I could see fumes of dark smoke rising from a deep pit. It was like the crater of a volcano, and inside I could see flames scorching a multitude of people who were screaming and crying in the kind of agony that only the severely burned truly knew. The people were naked, without hair, and standing close to one another, moving like worms, and the flames were scorching their bodies. There was no escape from those who were captured in the pit. Its walls were too deep for them to climb, and the hot coals of fire were all around the edges. Even though the Lord did not tell me this, I knew I was standing at the brink of hell. In heaven, whatever He showed me, it was such exciting things and awesome things. But uh, next, He showed me hell. He took me to hell. The first thing I seen uh, inside was all fire, but it was deep, dark, endless hole. People were necked, no hair. They didn't have no hair, they didn't have no clothes, and all necked body. They were standing so close to each other. Seems like they were pushing each other against them because they wanted to get away from fire. Each time they move, the fire followed them. Back of what? Back of what? Just the whole place was fire. These people were standing so close to each other. They looked so pain and sad. And I couldn't help crying so much for them. Then he took it there a second time. And I saw the same people again. Then I heard the voices, and I looked at the directions. So many Orientals there. And this one lady, she was waving at me, saying, so hot, so hot. I looked at her, and our eyes meet each other. That was my mother. When I realized it was my mother, my heart dropped. And I began to cry. I have never felt such a pain. Just a pain. So pain, I didn't know what to do. And she kept saying hot, hot, and she was waving at me. And I the way I seen it, she wanted me to come down and help her. Then I looked other people. It was my dad, my stepmother, my young nephew. He died very young, and two friends that I knew. Oh, that was such a painful memory. And I keep crying, crying, crying. And the Lord Jesus told me, Dora, I have a good reason to show you this. But I am hurting more than you are. Hmm. And I told him, Lord, my mother, she died young. She's been, she has been sick for a very long time. I don't think she was a bad person. 
He said, no matter how good people they are, whoever don't know me, that's the only place to go. But uh, in my heart saying, why you are showing me this to hold me this way? I thought about that, but I could have never angry at him. I couldn't see his face, but I could tell he was crying with me. I just felt that. He looked so sad. Then he touched my head, took my hand. We walked out there. And I was crying the whole time we were walking. Well, in the book explained the very details. So then next visiting, he showed me another sad thing. It was a worried baby. He took me to this one place. There was a huge building. It looked like a warehouse. When we walked in, all I see was babies. Tiny, tiny naked babies. And they were lying side by side. Hmm. And then I began to cry. No, why is so many babies? He said, they are aborted the babies. I said, what are you going to do with them? He said, if their mother be saved and they come to heaven, they will have their baby back. On her 17th trip to heaven, Jesus told Chu that this would be her last trip there. On this, she writes, His words stirred me deeply. My heart actually ached with the love for my Lord. He stood up, and I knew it was time for us to leave. I continued to cry, but my heart was reassured with the knowledge that I would be with the Lord forever, and that He would always be with me on earth. At the dressing room, an angel of the Lord embraced me. It was so exhilarating to be in a place where so much love, compassion, and understanding were always present. As I changed my clothing, I surmised that both Abraham and the angel knew this would be my last trip to heaven. As I walked out of the changing room, the angel hugged me once more. This angel had blonde hair, flowing white robes, and a face that was tender and warm. The angel smiled at me as I walked towards the Lord. When the Lord Jesus took me to heaven 17th time, He showed me clouds. And uh, that was uh, the end of my visitation in heaven. The Lord Jesus told me, this is the last time you are here. I will not bring you here until last day. I just felt I knew this. That was the last day. And I began to cry because I didn't want to leave there. I was holding his arm. I said, Lord, please don't let me go. I don't want to, I don't want to go because I want to come here over and over. It was very, very sad for me that I couldn't go there anymore. Because each time I went with him in heaven, I saw sad things, but joy, peace, I can never explain. Never can explain the joy, peace I had with him. Even sad, I still had the joy. So much love. I cried many days for that. The Bible talks about a day when Jesus Christ will come again for His church. In 1 Thessalonians 4.16, it reads, For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. 
This is known as the rapture. After all that, about a couple of weeks later, Lord Jesus, he brought me to the beach with my spare body and his. And we sat the usual place. Then we talked for a while. He told me, I will show you something. The minute he said that, I had a vision voice. Every time he shows me something special, I get a special vision voice. It's coming in my inner uh, body, stomach. It was so loud, and this vision voice took a very long time. Then I could hear noises, such, such loud, loud noises. I felt whole world was coming down, so loud, just horrible noises. Then I looked, whole air was white. People with white rope flying everywhere. Just keep popping up, popping up. Just disappear, popping up. Just filled with air with the people. Then I know there was a rapture. I was laughing, crying, screaming. So excited. Then I saw my granddaughter. She's only 10 months old. She didn't have no hair. Suddenly she flew out of the window from inside the room. Then with the white robe and her hair came down to the shoulder. You can imagine how excited I was. Then next minute I saw my other granddaughter. She was only 4 months old. She didn't have no hair. She flew out of the window, same as the other one, with the white rope, and her hair too came down to her shoulder. I was screaming, crying, laughing, exciting so much. Just I never excited that much before. Just excited. Whole house could hear. Good thing my husband wasn't home. If he was home, he really thought something wrong with me. <laughs> After that, God showed me a different scene. This scene was a very sad one. It was horrible. The Bible also talks about a time of great distress soon after the rapture. In Matthew 24 verses 21 to 22, Jesus said, For then there will be great distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. This is known as the Great Tribulation. Well, after the Lord Jesus he showed me another vision. This was so uh, people left behind. I believe uh, among them are a lot of Christians. That's why they were running, right? If they weren't Christians, they weren't running, you know? But the police were everywhere. People were everywhere. And uh, they just running, scared and a panicked face. Going to the car, going to the boat, running to the mound. They just don't know where to go. Just like, you know, they were chased by, you know, monster or something. So scary and horrible, horrible scene that was. And after that, Lord Jesus he told me, He told me that uh, what you seen just now is nothing compared to what will happen that day comes. And after that, He told me, all my people are raptured. Satan will take over this world. And he wanna everybody receive his number six six six. 
then anyone who refused to receive it, they will be beheaded. So whoever don't want to receive the marks of beast number 666, they give their heart to Jesus. They want to be with Him forever. Revelation 24. And then, whoever receives marks of beast number 666, they all were thrown into the lakes of fire forever, ever. They will be burning there for day and night, no resting. Revelation 14.11 So, everybody should know about these things. And remember, want to be beheaded, it will not easy way. They will be tortured so much before they will be beheaded. Because uh, Satan will not allow them to give in easily. So, whoever hear this message, please, if you are not have a close relationship with our Lord Jesus, please do something about your salvations. Also, if you are left behind, no matter what it costs, don't ever, ever take the marks of this number 666. It's better to be suffered for a while than suffer in the hell forever, ever burning in the fire. And please, please take it seriously what I'm saying. The book, Heaven is So Real, is currently being translated into many different languages and being distributed all over the world. There's also an MP3 version of this book, which can be downloaded online. Well, the book is doing great. And this book is international bestseller. The law used Dr. Yonggi Cho for this book, and he translated this book. It took him about two months to translate. Usually it takes about six, seven months. So. The day book was printed and it exploded in Korea and it's number one bestseller there. And the Almighty God using Dr. Yonggi Cho such an awesome way. He has uh, almost 800,000 members in his church. So God is using him for this book. He chose him for this book. Praise your Lord. And uh, the book is our Lord Jesus' in time book. He wants all the Christians to read this book and uh, witness to others. And that's what lots of people are doing. When they buy one book, they buy dozens, they buy hundreds, and they say this is the best witnessing tool. It's the Bible. And then I receive so many emails. I don't have any time for my own anymore. And especially when I receive emails from little young children, about 12 or 13 years old, they are saying they are so much in love with this book. They love Jesus. They love. Book. They call this Jesus book. You know, they are transformed by book. Some of them saying, I should quit the school and do God's work. I said, don't ever quit the school. <laughs> you have to study, you know. God wants you to have education. That's why I tell them, you know. But whatever you do, put the God for us, I say. You know? When I answer their emails, ah, they are so happy. You know, thousands and thousands of lives are changing with this book because it's Jesus book. So, and he prepared all his promise for this book. From beginning to end, he told me, well, well, he will take care of everything. From the beginning to end, I told him, you know, well, I was very worried of many things, you know. And he told me, why are you worried? 
This is my book. I will take care of. Always he told me that. But he has been taking care of everything from beginning to end. Whoever read this book, they know this is Jesus' book, and he did take care of everything. So all his promise for this book he fulfilled. Now, only thing left is my dancing ministry. He trained my dancing ministry. This is holy dance for three years. Then I danced at the church for two years. Now almost three and a half years. I'm waiting on it. Waiting is the hardest for serving God. You know, I had to wait seven years before he published the book. Sometimes even I thought he ever published this book, but he fulfilled his words. You see. At the end of her heavenly trips, Jesus makes a very special promise to True Thomas. Well, the end of the visitation was、uh, after I took care of、uh, the manuscript of the book. Then he brought me to the Altar Beach, and we spent about a couple hours.、Uh, he he told me he will bring me there every Monday. That was May twenty seven, nineteen ninety six. Ever since, he never missed once. He bring me there every Monday with my transformed body. He wake me up about oh few minutes after twelve o'clock every Monday morning. He shakes my body for thirty minutes, exactly thirty minutes, never less, never more. Then. His presence shows, and his spirit body, my spirit body. Then we go to the beach, and、uh, when we go there, you know, he talks mostly. I listen. Then I sing, I dance with my spirit body. And this is the best time of my life right now. According to the scriptures, the reason why Jesus died on the cross is because of John 3:16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Therefore, according to Romans 10:9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, I heard so many people saying, "Well, who cares if I die?" Hey, like they, you know. <laughs> Then I said, "You better care after you die." You know.、Uh, this was what I was the witnessing. If you die, you only go to two places: either heaven and hell. He said, "Hey, who cares if I die?" You know. They talk like they don't know anything after they die. I say you better care after you die because why? Even you die, your body die. You spirit soul will never die. That's why you can remember, you can pain, happy joy, everything just like when you were alive. So they still don't believe it. Ah,、huh? just they get angry at me. I say. I hope someday you will remember what I'm saying. Do you know Jesus? They say, "I know God." I say, "Well, Jesus is a God. He's a Father. He's the Holy Spirit. He's a... all."、Oh, if you don't know Jesus, you know in God, that's not going to take you to heaven. I just talk, talk. They don't hear most of these people. I just tell them, well, you don't want to believe now. I hope someday you you will believe. Then I talk, talk. No matter what, they don't want to accept the, the salvation package. You know what I say? I say, okay, you don't want to accept this salvation package. It's fine, but one day you will know all the God's people be raptured. Then you will know. 
what I'm saying right now. But I ask you though, that time comes, uh, never the receiver, the number 666. If you receive that, you're going to be burning in hell forever, ever, ever. So please, please don't receive the number 666. Would you please remember? You know, some of them say, okay. I say this to many, many people. Anyone who has never prayed a salvation prayer before, I would like to pray. Please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you are Son of God and you died for me. Please come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And I ask you to forgive me all of my sins and cleanse me with your precious blood. Taking control of every area of my life from this moment on. Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit and empower me to be used for your glory. I want to serve you, love you, obey you all the days of my life and make a difference in the lives of others. Father, thank you for making me your child. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone pray this prayer with me? Please go to church. Listen to the word of God from pastors and read the Bible every day. Study it. Pray many times a day and have a relationship with Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. On behalf of True Thomas's ministry, thank you for watching our show. In heaven is so real, Jesus said that he's coming back for his church sooner than we think. So get ready and let's give our God all the praise.